Hey guys, this is Dave from No Film School. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process that I've been using for offline editing and online color grading of Magic Lantern Raw shot with the 5D Mark III. First, we're going to rename all of our original .raw files using Apple Automator. We're going to implement a file naming scheme that we can control manually. Then we're going to bring those .raws into Raw Magic to convert them to Cinema DNG. We're going to bring our CDNGs into DaVinci Resolve and tell Resolve to assign real numbers using that file naming scheme that we just created and create our proxies. We're going to bring our proxies into Adobe Premiere Pro and create an offline edit, which we will then round trip out of Premiere back into Resolve to do our color correction and create our master. We will then round trip back into Premiere, bringing those newly graded master exports online and creating our master edit. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the .raw files right off of our CF cards. As you can see, Magic Lantern gives us sort of an arbitrary naming scheme that should be fine, but there's the slight chance that one file may end up having the same name as another file in the same project. And to alleviate that, we're actually going to use Apple Automator to customize our naming scheme. We go ahead and boot Automator. We're going to choose Workflow and go right into Files and Folders. We're going to create a prompt that will ask us for finder items. We want to enable allow multiple selection because that's part of the reason we're using Automator. We're going to select a custom directory for the prompt to begin looking into, which will set right to the master folder where all of our card dumps are. And then we're just going to add rename finder items. We're going to hit don't add any copies. We're going to select make sequential and add a new name. And in this case, we're going to be renaming the raws in card 12. So we'll start with 012 underscore M. And that will be the name after which the sequential numbers are added. So we are placing the number after the name. The numbers do start at one. We don't want to separate them by anything because Maybe we just don't like the way that that looks. And we're going to make all the sequentially generated numbers four digits long. Maybe just because we like the way that it looks, not necessarily going to shoot 999 clips or more on a single CF card. But So what we can do is go ahead and run the workflow. We're going right into card 12. Just click one. We hit Command A. Hit Choose. The workflow runs, and if we go back into Finder, we can see that the .raw files have been named sequentially with a naming scheme that can never produce any duplicates for this project, which is important for this workflow, and you'll see why in a minute. So then we're ready to throw our .raws into raw magic the way that we normally would. The only difference being that all of the DNG file names will be derived from the renamed file names that we've just created, which is pretty nifty. It's not completely necessary, but Again, it helps clear things up for us so there's no confusion. Go ahead and hit convert, and we will throw our Cinema DNGs where we want to work with them. As you can see, I've already done uh, this card, so you don't have to sit here and watch me do that. And once that is done, you're ready to begin your ingest phase and create your offline files or proxy files for offline editing. So we're going to go ahead and open DaVinci Resolve, and we're going to log in and create a new project. This one we're going to call 5D3 Raw. We're going to create that, open it up. We're going to find where our converted cinema DNGs are and bring all that right into our media pool. So once all our clips are in the media pool, we can move on to one of the most important steps of the workflow, which happens in the conform tab. The magic really happens down at this little gear icon at the bottom left. We're going to click on that. I usually select my playback frame rate to be 23.976. Scroll down and we see this almost hidden little checkbox that says assist using real names from the source clip file path name which is what we want so we'll go ahead and apply that and hit cancel and you can see that resolve has actually created new real names or real numbers from the source file names that contain our cinema dng sequences this is important because when we create our proxies from these original raws this metadata will carry through therefore enabling us to work offline and then create onlines. So we're going to create our offlines or proxies down here at the color tab. We're going to decode using clip, adjust our white balance if need be, and throw on highlight recovery if we so desire. And we're going to go to the very end of all of our clips 
and we're going to go down here to this little button that says apply settings to all selected clips. I'm going to click that. I leave the color space in Rec. 709 when I'm making proxies because it actually renders things quite pleasingly to the eye and since it's a default you don't have to do any kind of a one light or rough grade which could be very time consuming if you have a huge batch of clips and you just want to get to editing. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the deliver window where we will actually generate our proxies. Um, we're going to select QuickTime Apple ProRes 422 proxy for our format because while we're working offline we might as well minimize our storage footprint if we can. We're going to set our frame rate to 23976. Uh, I select normally scaled legal video for the video or data level. It's not necessarily important for your proxies. It's very important that we render the timeline as individual source clips because we don't want you know one giant proxy of all of our clips stuck together. I'm going to select the directory. We're going to use the source file name. I usually force debayer res to highest quality and at that point we're ready to add the job. We're going to hit continue and we're going to hit start render. And When your proxies are done you can begin your offline editing. As you can see here we have not only clip names that match the real names that were created but the real names have actually carried across from Resolve. In every single real name uh, or real number as Resolve calls it, tape name as Premiere Pro calls it, is individual to the clip so there's really no way for anything to get confused because if anything could get confused the offline workflow doesn't work or flow. So as you can see I've already cut something together which should look a little bit familiar. So once your edit is done you're ready to round trip back to Resolve for onlining and the creation of your master grade. I know it seems like we just left Resolve but this edit has probably taken us many many long hard hours so we're ready. So what I usually do is duplicate the sequence that I just completed my edit in and call it CC send for our round trip analogy. And since our picture is hopefully locked anyways if we're about to do a grade, I usually lock it and delete the audio so I can just work with the visuals in Resolve. Uh, my workflow will be coming back into Premiere once we've done our master grade anyways so we can always reunite our picture with our original audio from this other sequence here. So we want to save our project because Premiere won't let us do this part if we do not. I'm going to go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML, 5D3 RAW CC Send. Go ahead and save that. And then to Online, we're going to go back into Resolve. If the Resolve project that we created earlier contains all of the clips that we've used in our sequence, we can actually head right back into that Conform window. What you're going to want to do to bring in your XML is right click up here at the top left and go to Import XML. We're going to select our 5D3 RAW Color Correction Send XML. Hit Open. You're going to want to name this CC Return because when we render out our grade, it's going to be coming back into Premiere to complete the round trip, so to keep our terminology consistent, I do CC Send and CC Return. So this is the other key part of the workflow. This checkbox that says Automatically Import Source Clips into Media Pool. If we were to leave this checkbox checked on, what we would essentially be doing is giving Resolve permission to bring in whatever new media files that the XML refers to which Resolve does not already have in its media pool, which in this case are the proxies. So by unchecking the box, we're forcing Resolve to online anything that it has in its media pool with matching metadata. In this case, we have those real numbers. So when we hit OK, we should see our cut preserved in Resolve, except Resolve has conformed the original CDNG RAWs to the edit. And that means we're ready to start our color grading. So we go back down here to the color tab. We select our first clip. Once again, we want to make sure the white balance is correct. And the first major departure from what we did the last time we were in the color tab is that this time we do want to select Black Magic Design Film as our color space. And we're also going to check off Highlight Recovery to maximize the gamut of material that we have to work with. And at that point, once again, we want to shift click to the end of our timeline and hit the little button that says apply settings to all selected clips. So at that point we can start grading. Once we're done we're ready to complete our round trip back to Premiere. So once again we're going to go down to the delivery tab and if this is the same project that we've used before we just want to make sure that our render queue is totally empty. This time we're going to use an easy setup called Final Cut Pro XML round trip. From this little drop down box up here just select that we're going to want to select a much greater fidelity member of the ProRes family, uh, such as ProRes 4x4. Double check our frame rate, 23976. We can go with unscaled full range data. We select our directory. Scroll down. 
At this point we can render each clip with a unique file name if we want to, just to keep things consistent. I'm going to uncheck that, but again, since we have those real numbers or tape names, um, we can actually go back and forth through these programs as many times as we want if we had to. We want to double check and make sure that our out points are set to the right point in our timeline because our duration counter over here is reading five seconds long and our cut is definitely longer than five seconds. So go down to our timeline and go all the way to the end. This is how you do it if you don't know any hotkeys. And you just click this button here that says mark out. You can see that our duration changed to the proper length. And now when we hit add job, the entire timeline will be exported. And then you click start render and you're ready to head back to Premiere. You wanna to go to file, import, find your CC return XML. If you just import that, Premiere will automatically bring in all the associated clips. You can see here in our timeline, once again, we have our grade taking the place of our proxies. Everything should be where it needs to be. And then you're done. So before I go, I have to thank a couple people. Without some tutorials by some guys on YouTube, namely Dave Thomas and Jesse Borkowski, without the tutorials from those guys, it would have taken us a considerably longer time to figure this out. So thanks, guys. I also have to thank Joe Marine, who gave me the opportunity to play with a lot of this stuff and who shot for me, and also Sean Gavain, who shot for me and who pretty much gave birth to this workflow in its current form. So let us know what luck you have with the workflow, or if you do things differently, we always want to hear about that stuff too. So uh, we'll see you in the comments. Thanks for watching.